Hi everyone, it is Sarah Shipton here from Scrapbooking with Sarah and I am coming live to you on Tuesday, May 7th for our Technique Tuesday class this week and I am super excited to share with you. Now, <clears throat> as many of you know, one of my favourite topics to scrapbook is travel photos. Someone has joined us. Please say hello. It's Miss Mel. Hi Mel, how are you? Thanks for joining. It's so good to see you here. I'm so excited to see you girls on Saturday for our National Scrapbooking Day event, but also my first official workshop as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. We're going to have like one big party on Saturday. I'm so excited and I cannot wait to see you girls. I don't know how I'm going to sleep on Friday night. It'll feel like Christmas Eve, right? <clears throat> Until we can all come together. Miss Trudy is here. Hi, Trudy. Thanks for joining us today. It's great to see you online. Thank you all for your patience. I had a scrapbooking class this morning with a new friend who's going to be joining us at my workshop on Saturday. So I'm super excited about that. We'd love to have new friends come and scrapbook with us, don't we, girls? So thank you for being patient with me. I've then been out for lunch today and off to Officeworks. Oh my gosh, wait to see what I printed off at Officeworks. I can't wait to share with you, but I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I know I have a tendency to do that a little bit. So please stay tuned because I'm going to share with you what I just printed off at Officeworks and I'm going to have on hand for our workshop this Saturday. But first things first, let's look at this layout for this week's scrapbooking challenge so we are working with pattern number 34 this is from the make it from your heart volume 3 book as many of you know i was a maker with close to my heart and i have transitioned over to stamping up following the closure of close to my heart and one of my favorite things to use in my scrapbooking is the make it from your heart guides so whether you are a beginner or a seasoned expert, the patterns in this volume of the book give you practical tools to help you make beautiful layouts time and time again. So if you are just joining me with my weekly scrapbooking challenges, um, we have been working through all of the patterns. So we are up to pattern number 34. I do one a week and we I pick a pattern from the book. I recreate the pattern using current papers. So I am working with Stampin' Up! products now, girls, moving forward. However, I'm going to show you today some tips on how you can incorporate your existing scrapbooking products with the beautiful new papers from Stamping Up. Miss Pauline has joined us. Hi, Pauline. And there's Chris. Chris was our new friend that we had at my scrapbooking class this morning. It was so lovely to meet you, Chris. And I was just sharing with the ladies that we're going to have some new friends at scrapbooking on Saturday. So I'm super, super excited about that. So pattern number 34 we are working with and if you've got this make it from your heart volume three guide the pattern is on page 74 of the book. If you don't have the book then um, I have actually um, typed in the comments of the scrapbooking challenge in the comment section of the challenge I have actually typed in the cutting instructions and then the paper placement instructions and the photo placement instructions as well. But I'm going to walk you through that today on my video and today's technique is going to be how to create um, titles, alphabet titles, using your stamp set. So let's talk about the layout to get started with first, first and foremost. This is a double page scrapbook layout. So this will go in my 12 by 12 inch traditional scrapbooking album. And in the middle here, I have also inserted a Pocket Plus Memory Protector. Now, I taught with the Pocket Plus Memory Protectors last week, but we used a design that had three four by six inch landscape photos. And today I wanted to show you a different design of the Pocket Plus Memory Protectors. So this design enables us to get an additional eight photos onto our scrapbook layout in three by four inch landscape format in that orientation. Now you can see here I've actually incorporated my journaling box here into my memory protector. So if you haven't worked with these before, how this works is this actually sits in the middle of your scrapbook layout. So this is my 12 by 12 inch layout. It will look like this at the album. 
and I will turn my scrapbook layout like a page in the album. And the memory protector actually sits inside the middle of my layout and it is the same design. You can see here I've got holes in my memory protector here. I can put this memory protector into a D-ring album or I can put it into a post-bound album. And the Memory Protector Pocket Plus works the same way in that you've got holes in the inside here and you will insert this into your album just like you would an extra page in your album it will line up and it will flip like a page in your scrapbook. So I'm a big fan of this particular product because it enables me to get extra photos on my scrapbook layout. Another product that I'm a really big fan of is the flip flap. So the flip flap also enables me to get extra photos onto my layout as well. So this is my scrapbook layout inside the memory protector. So if I slide that out, this is what I'm going to be demonstrating today using the alphabet stamps to create your titles. Now, I'm going to be really honest with you. I'm not convinced I'm entirely happy <laughs> with my four by six inch square here. You can see here we've got a four by six inch square and um, Forever Summer. I'm pretty sure that was a stamp set that we had once upon a time in Close to My Heart, or it could actually have been cut with the Cricut. I recognise this font. So I don't have the stamp set, but it may very well have been a font um, that we cut out digitally using the Cricut. So um, I've actually stamped my title today. And I'm going to demonstrate that um, shortly. So I have copied that particular page here, but I had these extra two landscape photos that I wanted to get onto my layout. You can see I've got some landscape photos here, but I had these extra two photos that I wanted to get on my layout. So this is where I've used the flip flap. So if you're not familiar with a flip flap, please feel free to check out my YouTube videos because I do often teach with flip flaps. And there is definitely a couple there where I've demonstrated how to pop them onto the top of your memory protector. So it's a pocket where you can slide extra photographs into. I like to stick my photos back to back before I put them into the flip flap so it doesn't slide around. And there is a adhesive strip on the flip flap and you peel that um, um, like the backing off of it. Let me show you what one looks like beforehand. So this is the flip flap here. Um, you can peel the backing off of the flip flap and then you can actually stick that onto the top of your memory protector. So I could flip it out that way. Um, I could put it here and flip it down like so. So you've got a little bit of versatility with this particular product. Now, the flip flap, both the flip flap that you're looking at here and the Memory Protector Pocket Plus were close to my heart branded products. Okay, so if you purchase these when you were a customer with me um, while I was a maker with Close to My Heart, then you would be familiar with these. If you are new to this, the exciting news is that Stamping Up actually purchased some intellectual property from Close to My Heart. And I know that we're going to be carrying the flip flaps moving forward. And to the best of my knowledge, my understanding is that we will not be carrying over the Memory Protector Pocket Plus, okay? Um, that was some time ago I was given that information. Um, I haven't heard an update on that. So um, whether there's been a change, I'm not sure. But as Close to My Heart were um, reducing their um, product range and liquidating their stock, these Memory Protector Pocket Plus actually were reduced quite heavily. Um, and I know that a lot of you stocked up on those. And I did also order some extra packs to have in stock as well. So if you've not used this product before and you would like to have, incorporate it into your scrapbooking, you will be pleased to know that I will have some packets of these in stock and I will be able to sell them with my extenuating policy through till the end of this year. So that's why I'm excited to teach with it. So I've created my scrapbook layout here on my papers. Now I've used the beautiful unbounded beauty designer series paper now you might remember that i taught with this last week and it was very floral right guys look i've used a floral paper collection with photos of us in indonesia a beautiful beach location i just love the colors of the sunset here um, i love the texture and the wood and all the fabrics 
in the decor. We actually took an overnight trip. We were in Bali. We took the kids to Bali for their 18th and 21st birthdays. And in fact, this was in lieu of an incentive trip that I earned with Close to My Heart to Fiji. And we weren't able to go because of COVID. And we were given travel credits to use. So we chose to use our travel credits to take the kids to Bali for their 21st and 18th birthday. And we did this in 2022. And it was our first time to Bali. And we took an overnight trip to Noosa Lembongan um, because we did a sailing and snorkeling tour with Captain Nemo and we got to swim with some fish and we did deep sea diving with the turtles and we also swam with the manta rays. So these photos here were on the first day that we arrived. We took a ferry from Sunur over to Noosa Lamongan and this was our first day. We had an overnight stay in a very traditional rustic um, accommodation style And we literally sat right on the beach, drinking cocktails, swimming in this beautiful pool. Um, This is probably a better photo of that here in my flip flap. This beautiful pool overlooking the ocean and we had cocktails. It was literally just um, sand in your feet and a beautiful overnight stay that we had. So how awesome that I've been able to take a floral paper collection from the Stampin' Up! range and I've used it to scrapbook my travel photos. I love the blues here. It works perfectly with our Summer Splash ink pad. And the other colour that I've incorporated has been Peach Pie. So this is the designer series paper in um, pattern paper. So Peach Pie, this is Summer Splash here. And then I've used just some standard craft paper through the middle here just to break that up. And something really else that's cool that I wanted to share with you is um, you can also get this paper range in six by six inch sheets of paper. So you've got all of the in colours. So in colours are basically um, five colours that we will have from 2024 to 2026. And they're like the on-trend colours. So for those of you that scrapbooked with me with Close to My Heart, I want you to compare that to what we called colour of the year, which was Journey. And the five in colours are uh, Pretty in Pink, Peach Pie, uh, Shy Shamrock, and oh my gosh, let me see how good I am at this. (laughs) Oh, this is Petunia Pop, and this is Summer Splash. So lots of new names of colours for me to get used to, girls. But check this out. This is six by six inch designer series paper that you can purchase. And what I wanted to do was show you how you could use this paper. You can see here what I've done is I've actually trimmed through here, instead of using um, a zip strip, this is a half inch bit of paper that's running through here. Now, the reason I use this is because when you cut this, it's obviously going to be at six inches. And I made sure that I matched my papers up so you could see the lines going through here. It matched up. And you're not going to see where the paper is going to meet underneath because my photo is actually covering that. So I wanted to introduce you to the six by six inch papers and show you how you could incorporate those into a 12 by 12 inch layout. You'll see me do more with these papers because we have this collection for a year, right? So you will see me do some more with the six by six inch papers on a 12 by 12 inch layout. So you're basically getting more uh, versatility with your patterns because these patterns in the six by six inch sheets are different to the patterns in the 12 by 12 inch papers, okay? So we've got a beautiful stripe pattern. We've got some dots here. On the back side, we've got this leaf and floral pattern. And I remember last week I said that I wasn't quite sure what sort of pattern this was, um, but I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. And um, how awesome that we've got access to a paper suite for an entire year, girls, to work with. That is what I'm super excited about. So um, I have used um, designer series paper here and here, craft paper through here. I've used the six by six inch paper through here to make my half inch strips. And then my journal box was actually from the Memories and More pocket scrapbooking cards. So these pocket scrapbooking cards, um, I did teach with these last week as well. So if you missed that video, you can go back through our Facebook group to find last week's class, or you can just pop onto my YouTube channel and you can scroll through because 
these videos that I do live in our Facebook group, I then download them and I upload them <laughs> to my YouTube channel so um, the, the videos are public. So you can go back and watch those at any time. So these pocket cards are in four by six inches and also three by four inches. So you can see that it's got a striped pattern here on the card and I've used that, here it is here, I've used this as my journal box and I've just ruled lines through here to make my journal box. I have actually played with the new Stampin' Write marker. This is a 0.5 mil pen, so the same one that you're used to with journaling. It's basic black, it is a water-based dye ink, okay, um, and it's dual tip. So you've got the 0.5 mil tip on one end and then you've got the... Um, you've got the marker side at the other end here. So it's a little bit thicker. And in fact, I had some scrap paper here. So I actually played with that before I did some journaling just to get a feel for what the pen felt like to journal with. Um, but I'm really happy with it. So I had to play with that and I've ruled my lines at a quarter of an inch here using my T-square ruler. When I'm creating my own journal boxes, a little tip for you is to do your embellishing first and then you can rule your lines around your embellishing. So I've actually coordinated this paper collection with some of my close to my heart stash and I know that you girls have got plenty of that. So one of the things I really want to encourage you to do is um, I want to inspire you to be able to uh, coordinate and pair up the current product that you've got sitting in your craft stash and showing you ways that you can coordinate it with the beautiful new Stamping Up product that we're going to um, have fun creating with. So this burlap ribbon here and this little um, craft embellishment, this little arrow embellishment here, um, that was from a previous paper collection that we used called No Worries. And it was very beach themed. It's got this um, gorgeous um, textured burlap ribbon and the craft die cuts coordinate with the craft cardstock here. Now, this little white circle here, I've just cut that out with my white daisy paper and I have used the um, new die cuts, the Flowers of Beauty dies. So these are a new die cut that I've been playing with. I did share some of this last week as well. And you can see here, we've got different size dies and borders and frames, and these are the circle ones. So I just cut out a couple of those, and you can see um, that I've used them as part of my embellishing here and also here. So when you're making your own journal boxes, so I did have to make my own journal boxes because there's not actually, like we are used to, journal boxes that are pre-ruled with lines on them. Um, these are more picture cards, uh, pocket scrapbooking cards. There wasn't any. I think there was literally only one in there. This was a space you could use for journaling. Um, I think, oh, here we go. This was the only one that kind of really had ruled lines on there. So you can make your own journal boxes by ruling the lines. And my suggestion for that is to do your embellishment first and then rule your lines in and around that so you know how much room you've got to work with there, okay? And then I've just accented them with some of the resin dots. So this is a packet of the resin dots which feature all of the in colours. So the five different colours I ran through, you can see my nails, pretty in pink girls. And that's my journal box done, okay? So, and then all photos on the back here. I have also done a little embellishment cluster up the top here. Again, this little craft die cut and sticker was from my CTMH stash, the No Worries paper collection. I thought that the colours per paired perfectly with Summer Splash and the Unbounded Beauty collection. The little resin dots are stamping up. And then here I've just made a little circle embellishment in the corner here. Um, this craft circle was from the No Worries the little beach chair and the starfish was from the No Worries. I've just popped that beach chair up with some 3D foam tape. Um, so you will be able to purchase um, 3D um, tape. It's actually called Stampin' Dimensionals. So if you're at my workshop on Saturday, I'm going to be sharing that with you girls. 
Um, and then I've just accented some little resin dots here. And then, of course, we get to this side here where I've created my title. So I've used some 4 by 6 inch white daisy cardstock there. I did wrap the burlap ribbon around the back of that first. And I stuck that down using my new fine tip glue pen. I am in love with this. Really simple and easy to use. You just had to set it in place to dry and then to hold the ribbon in place on the top here. I've just popped a couple of the glue dots, which um, we stock with Stampin' Up. And then I've tied a little bit of excess ribbon onto the top of that there um, just to add a fine little detail. And what I'm going to teach you today is the stamping with the Alphabet Stamp Set. And this is a fun set. I know that some of you have invested in this set before um, I finished up with Close to My Heart. And these little die cuts and stickers were also from my CTMH stash. No worries. Little white circle here. And then I've used the resin dots here just to embellish. So I showed this to my daughter and she think it, look, it looked fabulous. But I was a little bit like, oh, I don't know. I feel like maybe I should have um, distressed this around the edges with maybe some ink. What do you think, girls? If you've got any, any tips, because I could definitely lift that all off. And I could probably ink around the outside of that. I feel like it needs something else. I don't know. But I will come back to that. If you've got any tips or suggestions or ideas, girls, on what you think would be fun to do with that, um, please share that with me. Okay, so let's get to the alphabet <clears throat> um, stamp set. Now, in terms of alpha stamp sets with Stampin' Up!, if you go onto my website and you type in the word alpha or alphabet, um, there will be some die cuts that will come up and only one stamp set with an alphabet um, set. So I know that many of you have got, and really the, the good thing is you really only need one good um, alphabet stamp set and you are set, right? For those of you that have been scrapbooking with me for some time, when you started out as a brand new scrapbooker with Close to My Heart, this particular stamp set was in our starter kit. This has been another really popular one that we've used over the years. The size is quite similar. This alphabet set is probably a little bit bigger, but it also came with some thin cuts as well. So you could create this um, banner look here. So I've actually cut out, I'm going to pull this out because we're going to work with this today. So um, these are the banners. So you get four different designs. Now, Obviously, this set has sold out. For those of you that have got it, you can keep using it. If you come to my workshop, it will be there for you to use as well. And you can see there's little holes in the die cuts here. So what I've done here was I cut my burlap ribbon in half and I thread it through the little dots. And then I just got my tweezers, which of course are in the other room. Um, but I just got my tweezers and I just picked at the ends just to fray it a little bit and through the middle here, just to give it that really textured look. And it goes quite nicely with the um, Indonesian style decor, right girls? So I've used the die cut, this um, round die cut or oval die cut is probably one of my favorite one, rounded edges. It's a bit shorter than this one here, as you can see. And my tip would be to cut out, if you've got this set, to cut out your uh, it's like a little bunting piece. You want to cut this out first and then stamp on top afterwards. I find that easier to do rather than stamping first and then try to align over what you've stamped because you're not going to see it when it's face down on your cardstock. So you're best to cut these out first and then stamp on top afterwards. I have used the colour Summer Splash to stamp my title and it probably hasn't shown up as great on the craft cardstock as maybe um, a black ink would, but I wanted to really keep it in line with that color theme. And then I've used the Summer Splash ink pads um, down here to create my title Labongan. So what I wanted to share with you from Officeworks, um, <clears throat> I did post this in our Facebook group uh, last week, and I know that many of you have already printed this off to have on hand with your scrapbooking. So this is a colour comparison chart that the fantastic staff at Stampin' Up! Home Office have put together for us. 
And what it does is it lists the close to my heart color. So our colors were in both um, ink pads and also cardstock. And then it compares them with <clears throat> a comparison color that Stampin' Up! have in their product range. Now, Stampin' Up! colors, there are off the top of my head, I think there's 50 of them. And so they've compared that with the closest, close to my heart color that we used. Some of these colors um, were not current when close to my heart closed. However, all of the Stampin' Up! colors on the right-hand side are current, and that's why you might see some older colors in the list um, like, um, let me find one here. An older color would have been uh, Sea Salt was an older color. Uh, Seabrook, oh, was that recent or a color? I can't remember. Um, but that's why you will see a comparison there. So you can see I've printed this off in a really big chart for us to have on hand at workshops. Um, and then you can use this in your scrapbooking projects. It will help you jumpstart your crafting experience with Stampin' Up! And I want to say a very big thank you to them um, for doing that for us. So if you don't want to invest in an ink pad or you might have a colour ink pad already that's a, a close colour similar to this, you can use that colour comparison chart to figure out. I'm looking at that and I'm thinking of Lagoon or Seabrook you could figure out which color ink pad or cardstock you might already have that you want to use, okay? So um, I wanted to share that with you and I'm excited to share that with you at our workshop this weekend. So I'm just going to grab my mat out and I've got my scrapbooking layer here. So I've got my 12 by 12 inch mat I'm going to share some things from you with the catalog at the end of this video as well. Um, I've got my foam square here. So, and I've got some white daisy cardstock that I'm just going to use to stamp on. And a couple of things here for you. I am going to use the summer splash color today. And see here's some that I've already um, pre-cut and had there as an example. So when you are stamping your titles, so as I mentioned with this one here, I cut my um, bunting piece out separately first and then stamped over the top of them. So these ones I stamped individually. And I will be honest with you, when I stamped the title Lembongan, I did stamp them one by one. And the reason for that being is that your acrylic blocks, now the acrylic blocks that I had as a Close to My Heart maker, um, stamping up also have acrylic blocks so if you already have your blocks you can keep using them if you are new to stamping and you want to get started then I'm going to share some acrylic blocks um, with you from the catalog and so I do prefer to stamp each of my letters one by one because the thing I love about the acrylic block is obviously it's clear you've got grooved edges here so I can see through my acrylic block well enough that I can stamp them individually one by one. However, I am going to show you how you could do one word all at the same time on the block. There is a line here and I have to admit I haven't actually invested in any of the Stampin' Up! blocks yet, um, but I will be. As you know, I only just received my starter kit recently and I was limited to how much I could add to my starter kit, but I have also done my first order as a Stampin' Up! demonstrator last week, girls, and I am desperately waiting on that to arrive. I am stalking my tracking emails every day, waiting for this. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the letters, I'm going to create the word fun, and I'm using, there is a line at the bottom of my block where I'm going to be lining up my stamps and it's a little tricky because you've actually got to build the word backwards so where oh I don't like that that's too far away from each other so I am using the line here to line up and and stamp the word fun because that is how much that's what we do when we scrapbook together right girls we have lots of fun so I've got my classic stamping pad in summer splash so you open your pad up like so, and then you are going to slide the lid of the pad into its base. 
And now, one thing I will say that I have noticed a difference with, and I talked about this last week, is that the the stamp pad is um, not felt. And so it's it's kind of a little tacky, all right? So one of the things I used to teach my um, customers, audience, community with when they were new to stamping was you would um, tap, tap and twist, twist and finish with a tap so you didn't smudge that ink on your stamp pad. But I, I found that with these ink pads, the Stampin' Up! ink pads, you can just tap. You don't really need to twist because... It's a little tacky, right? And look what happens when I've twist. I've just um, wiped my um, block all the way in the ink pad there. So I'm going to get my stamp chamois and I'm just going to wipe off that excess because we don't want that on my block before I stamp that because I will probably make a really big mess, all right? So I'm just going to tap that into the ink pad. You don't need to apply too much pressure. We're just lightly tapping that in and then... With my white daisy cardstock, I'm going to pre apply pressure to this. Oh my gosh, my hand's moving there. And we're going to stamp the word fun, okay? Just in the bottom right-hand corner here, I could make this as a little journal box there. Now you can see that when you build your stamps onto the block, okay, you do end up with quite a bit of space uh, between the letters there, which is why I like to stamp them one by one. So what we are going to do is I'm going to show you by stamping them one by one. It's really just a a personal preference. There's no hard or fast rules because we don't want to have rules with scrapbooking. We want to keep it fun, right? I'm going to use my smaller block to stamp these letters individually. And I am going to line that up there on the base and now I'm going to tap this into the ink okay oh I've got some excess around there so this is why it's good to have your stamping chamois or some tissues on hand now I note that Stampin' Up I've actually had a look at some of their um, stamping products I am still learning girls so thank you for your grace and your patience with me um, I am still learning I've got another bit of white daisy cardstock here uh, ready to rock and roll. So I'm just going to come into this bottom corner here and stamp the F. And then I'm going to wipe my ink off my stamp chamois. And I'm going to pop that F back onto the carrier sheet for the stamp. And then we're going to do the U. Um, so Stampin' Up! use a stamp spritzer and a um, like a stamp scrubber tray. It's like a tray, so you open it up, it's got the bristles in it. So I literally could just, when I want to clean off the excess of my ink, I could just rub that into the top of the um, tray. So I'm just inking that up. I've got the excess on here as well. I feel like because the, um, the stamp pad is so wet i used the word juicy last week and let me tell you you girls teased me because i said juicy so many times <laughs> and we had a bit of a laugh about that didn't we girls i feel like because the ink is like so um the pad is so wet that it's easy to get that excess around the edge there so we've got f u for fun f u and then n to make fun F, U, and N. Where's my N? What did I do with my N? Oh, here it is. Okay, so um, the thing I love about Alphabet as titles as well, Alphabet stamp sets as titles, is that you are never, like as opposed to stickers, right, you are never going to run out of your letters, okay, because you can use the stamps again and again and again. And same with the die cuts, a good set of alphabet die cuts. They're kind of like one of those things that you've just got to have in your collection. So you can see here that I'm using my um, the block. And I will say it is a little tricky to stamp on a video because I like to get right up and over the top. And it's hard to do that on a video because otherwise you would see my head in the video. So if you were to look there in comparison lining it up on the block first 
does obviously work out much better. But when I've stamped this one, I've stamped them one by one. Now, you could rule a very thin faint line if you wanted to make sure it was super straight. I particularly just eyeball it, to be honest with you. I do just eyeball it. But you could roll, uh, rule a line if you were that way inclined. Um, you can see that I've got the word fun much straighter by creating the word on my block first. That works if you're only using the same letters. Um, sorry, the individual letters. If I was to stamp the word Sarah, that wouldn't work because I would need two A's. I haven't done as great a job as stamping that by doing it individually. But as I said, it is tricky to do that in this um, format because I've got the phone right over the top of my workspace. So in sharing with you some of these fun products, making sure you've invested in a alphabet stamp set is definitely a goer. You will see them, the set on my website, if you go to the search function and just type in alphabet, both the die cuts and also the um, stamp set will come up. So I wanted to share with you the pocket cards. So one thing I will point out with the new annual catalogue, it's very much like a magazine experience. And the catalogue, for those of you that are used to um, grids and pictures, uh, the catalogue is very much an experience, girls. And it is almost like looking through a magazine, put your feet up with a cup of coffee. I've looked through it dozens of times and every single time I find something new, okay? But the catalogue is spread really into an experience and it's broken into three sections in that the first section is our step-by-step -step crafting, which is great for people that want quick paper craft projects with instructions to help you. This is a grab and grow project. These are for people that do not want an entire craft room full of stuff, but just something really quick and easy with instructional guides that they can work on. The middle section of the catalogue are our quick and easy options. So crafting ideas using a variety of paper pieces, cardstock, envelopes. It's got your top 10 crafting essentials, how to coordinate your product, reasons to craft, and then a very basic um, card design. And then the back section of the catalogue, as you can see here, the, the, the main chunk of the book is Creativity Your Way. So this is for... Those of you that like to start from scratch, you just want to be inspired and you want to craft something new, okay? So it is broken into crafting sections and you will see also um, it's uh, colour coordinated. So you've got your step-by-step -step crafting here, which is um, pink. You've got your quick and easy options in the middle. Oh, sorry, not pink, sorry. Pretty in pink. You've got your quick and easy options in the middle here using peach pie and then of course we have creativity your way and this is all of the different paper suites and bundles stamping techniques so then this is all broken down into different categories here as well depending on what type of crafting and um, how you like to create okay so I do want to point that out and I will go through that in detail at the workshop on Saturday as well so today I worked with the Unbounded Beauty Paper Suite and I used the Designer Series Paper. I used the Resin Dots and I used the Unbounded Love um, Dies for the, the Circle Dies, okay? So you can purchase your components of a paper suite individually or you can buy the whole collection if you're that way inclined, I also, oh, I forgot to share with you, sorry, back here where the pocket scrapbooking cards were, um, I also, oh, I've come too far. I also used the new basic black stamp and write marker. Okay, so you will see that on my website. Um, here is the stamping section here for different techniques that you can learn. So coming to the acrylic blocks, if you're new to stamping, you can purchase a bundle with all the size blocks or you can get your stamp blocks individually as you need them. This was what I was talking about earlier. To get your stamps squeaky clean, you would use the Stamp and Miss Stamp Cleaner and also the Stamp and Scrub together. Okay, so you can purchase those items there if you're new to um, stamping. And then last but by no means least, um, the adhesives. 
and I love all the different adhesive options in the catalog. And there is a um, icon chart here, which points out which adhesive is best for your project. I used the fine tip glue pen to stick down my um, burlap ribbon, but also these types of adhesives as well, where you've got these thin or fine borders um, is really handy. To stick up my little bunting, I used the Stampin' Dimensionals. So this is foam tape and that gives um, height to your scrapbooking um, embellishments and stickers. And then you've got your adhesive as well for your cardstock and paper. So they are all the goodies that I've used as part of creating this layout to share with you this week. I will post this video to our Facebook group and I will share some links in the comments to where you can find those products that I've shared with you today in my live video. Ladies, thank you so much for watching. For those of you that are booked in for May 11, I cannot wait to see you and share these beautiful products with you in person. I'm super, super excited to see you all. I can't wait to see what you're creating this week. If you're going to be participating in the challenge, please take a photo of your layout and post it in the comments. And I will be drawing a lucky winner for May's challenge during our first Technique Tuesday class in June. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you very much for watching.